Hi everybody, I'm Claire. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to do another slightly crazy straight pour. Um, instead of um, uh, filling up, um, layering up one cup of paint or three cups that I'm used to, I'm going to go for eight cups of paint. Um, I'm going to straight pour them onto the canvas um, and just see what I get. So lots of paint, lots of fun, lots of mess probably. Um, so I've picked some really fab colours. Um, so let me show you what I'm going to use. So here are my colours, just think they look so nice together, so rich and warm. Um, this is what they are, so two Montmartre colours, oh excuse my hands, um, this is the Montmartre purple and then the Montmartre gold. I've got some white which is Royal and Langnickel, I've got Amsterdam which is Caput Morton Violet um, and then I've got five Pebio Studio Acrylics colours, I've got Copper, Silver, Iridescent Red Blue, Payne's Grey and Iridescent Gold. So I've got two golds in here, but look at the difference. They are totally, totally different. So this is the one that's, it's a very rich, warm gold. Whereas this is the one, this is probably the one I use most often actually, it's a slightly yellowier gold. So just actually quite a contrast there when you, you can see them side by side. Um, so that's the Payne's Grey, the Caput Morton Violet, white, um, then the iridescent red blue, copper, silver and purple. So they're all mixed with PVA glue and water and I will put the recipe for the mixtures um, in the video description. So I've got eight little silicon cups here. So I'm going to lay these up. This is the order that I'm going to, to do them in. So starting with this gold coming along the top row here and then jumping here coming along here. Um, so in fact what I might do, just thinking, I might actually, it will keep the order the same but put the white first. Let's shuffle these along a bit. So I haven't changed the order but I'm going to go for the white first. So I'm going to have a little bit of white at the bottom of each of these cups so that when they're poured out it will be the white that comes out last, so there'll be a small white centre in, um, in each puddle of paint. So I want to do two layers of paint in each cup. So I'm going to put some in each of these eight cups and I want to be using about half of what I've got so that I can then come back and do another layer. I think I've probably got too much paint, so I don't want to do really big layers here. So that was the white, so a little bit of the um, the Pebio gold next. Because these are so thick, the colour is just sitting on top. So it's not sinking, it's not mixing, it's just literally just sitting on top of each other at the moment. Right, so I think I used a bit more than half of that cup. There's still plenty in there, but I think that was a bit more than half, but that's okay. Right, let's put some of this lovely bronze in. I think these are actually going to be too small to do two layers. Looking at how much this is filled up already. I think the cups are probably too small for two layers with the amount that I'm putting in. Maybe I should go for a bit less. I might be able to do less by just, yeah, I'm just going to spoon it in like this. And I've got much more control of how much I'm putting in there.
So the canvas I'm going to use is 59 centimeters by 42 centimeters. I've got my eight um, cups of paint here, but I had some leftovers. So what I actually did was just layer up two more here. They're different because I ran out of a couple of the colors. So they're just using up the leftovers. I managed to get two layers of the colors that I had left in there. So I've got those as backup. So I'm going to pour on the eight. I find it very, very difficult to judge how much paint I need for the different types of pours. So it may be that I've got way too much here. So I'm just gonna start pouring and see how much, see, see how it goes. So a straight pour simply means I'm pouring the, the paint straight onto the canvas. So I think I'm gonna start up here somewhere. Um, yeah, and then just, just dot them around. So one down, the colours are gorgeous. So it seems to be the um, violet colour and the gold that I'm seeing the most of there. Wow, I am pretty, pretty excited about this. These colours are gorgeous. I am loving this so far. I almost wish I could just keep it like that. Right, I'm going to give it a good torch. There's lots and lots of bubbles. I quite like um, doing lots of torching when I'm doing straight pours because you, you burst the bubbles 
and that creates lots of almost like little cells all over the painting. So I don't particularly like that when, I, when it comes to doing a Dutch pour, but with a straight pour, I quite like that because then where, where the air bubble bursts, it often shows the colour underneath. So it just gives it lots more um, kind of details in, in the painting. And I'd only just mixed up this pouring medium, but if I was going to be doing a different type of pour, I would have let it sit, but because I was going to be doing a straight pour with it, I was keen just to, to do it and then carry on straight away. Um, I'm not going to put any more of the cups on, so eight is absolutely plenty. Um, what I might do is just dilute a little bit of the Payne's Grey that's left over and just put that around the edge here on the white because then it would just give this lovely puddle something to, to slide over. So yeah, I think I might do that now. Right, now for the fun bit, the messy bit. So let's start tilting. Right, this is a very heavy canvas. There is a lot of paint on here. So I think to start with, I'm just going to just stretch it out a little bit, just to get the canvas more or less covered. So just go to the four corners, but try and not get it to go over the edge at the moment. I have no idea what the composition of this piece will look like when it's finished and how many of these puddles will be left. Will I be tilting all of them, all of some of them off? I just, I just don't really know. I'm going to have to do quite a lot of tilting because there's a lot of paint on here. So I'm going to start going off over some corners. So I think what I will do next is just go off over the corners and then bring the comp and then, then bring the weight of the paint back to the center and then have a good look at the composition. There's lots and lots of paint on here. So I'm really going to be able to do quite a lot with the composition, I think. Wow, this is so interesting because the white section in the centre of each of the puddles to start with was just tiny and I thought, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad I've put only just a little bit of white paint in there. But now this is tilting out, that white is actually really taking over. The colours are love really beautiful. So it's the Caput Morton Violet and the purple and the gold now that's really coming through. Right, so that's all the canvas covered. So I'm just bringing the weight of the paint back towards the centre. And then I'm going to put it down and torch it and have a look at it. Wow. Wow. I love it. I think I'm going to do a little bit more stretching and I think the stretching I'm going to do is to remove a little bit more of this white. The white totally came off over this corner. 
and I like that. So I think if I can remove a little bit more of the white here and maybe down here, then I think that will be, I think I'll be happy with that. And that will be finished. So let's come off this, my right hand side a little bit. Um, I quite like this bit up here. I think I'll probably end up losing it. But what I'm going to do is just tilt it down to this corner towards me. In fact, if I turn the canvas round, then you'll be able to see better, I think. So I'm going to try and bring the weight of the paint down to this corner and then tilt off this side to try and keep some of this bit at the top here. Oh, and look at this, it's really opening up this other side now. Again, I'm just bringing the weight of the paint back to the centre so I can then have a look at it. There's still loads of paint, so I've still got a lot that I can do if I want to. I'm still just not as happy with this bit here. I'm going to take a bit more off down there. I think really I had too much paint. Oh, I love it though. I love it. I think really there's too much paint because I could I could keep keep stretching this, but if I do that, I'm only going to end up with one puddle of paint left in the from the center. I think I am done. Yep. I'm done. Oh, I love it. Let me let me show you. Let me get let get you in for a close up. I just did one more very small tilt off camera then. Um I just this puddle here was very very distorted. So what I decided to do was just tilt some of it off and then bring it back and it's really opened that up. So I've now got these three main puddles with the white section and this here and they're all about the same size. So um, and they're all nice, reasonably nice and round, whereas this one, as I said, it was just very stretched and elongated and I didn't like it. Just look at the colours, the craziness of it, another crazy painting. Um, the details are amazing. Let me show you, I'm so happy with them. Can you just see the depth in that? It's just, just it's fascinating. So you, it looks 3D, it just looks fluffy, curly, curvy. Um, just absolutely fascinating. I don't think the purples and pinks and gold. Um, you've got a little bit of the bronze in there. I think the bronze is a little bit lost. What I'm extremely happy with is that the Payne Grey hasn't taken over. So I only ended up putting one layer of Payne Grey in. I did two of everything else, which you might have noticed, and the second layer, a little bit falls out. And the second layer, I didn't put more paint grey in because it's such a dark, dominating colour, and I didn't want that to be the theme of the painting. But you can see it in here, so subtly, you just get that subtle hint of it. And of course, as described, it will get darker. So um, 
everything, all the dark blue canals will look dark and clear. So the purple will probably end up looking quite, almost quite black. So here's the dry painting. It's such an interesting painting. Again, slightly crazy, slightly weird, so interesting. Um, the colours have darkened a lot, um, and I'm not sure if that's good or bad. So you've lost a lot of the really bright kind of purpley pinks, but you've got these wonderful warm kind of plummy colours, um, really, which are which are really nice. Um, what I'm absolutely um, over the moon at is these little white patches. Look at the depth in it. You, it it just looks so 3D. It just looks like kind of marshmallow or something. It's just really 3D. And the same with this one down here. You've got just, just so much depth in it. It does not look flat. It's just amazing. And then these colours, they're just such warm, warm colours. So purpley, plummy colours, goldy colours. Um, really pretty. So some of the lines are just fascinating so many oh, let me just focus so many interesting lines um, and everything is separated by these wonderful bands of this fluffy white i think in hindsight i should have maybe used less white i think that the white that i put in the bottom of the cups so that which comes out of the cup last so that's the the central white splodges I think really I probably put a bit too much white in just a hint would have been better um, but it, it's made a fascinating painting and um, the edges are gorgeous look at the, th the thick strong colours on the edges yeah so overall I'm over the moon absolutely love this so let me know what you think um, do please do leave me any comments any thoughts you have on this piece Great, thanks so much for watching everyone. Bye.